Zero Accounting Software 2023 PayPal Bank Feeds. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put the reports in like we do every time. Right click it on the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click it on the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, opening up the balance sheet report. Then we're going to tab to the right, accounting drop down, this time opening up the income statement. Date range change, we're gonna to go to the drop down. We're looking 2022, January 1st. We're going to the end of 2022, that being December 31st. Updating the report. Let's go down to the first tab and then accounting drop down and look at our bank accounts. Now in prior presentations, we've been uh, looking at our bank feeds. We looked at the checking account. We looked at the credit card account. Now we want to consider some of those intermediary tools that you might be using. In particular, we're looking at PayPal. So if you have a PayPal system set up, then it used to be that something that a PayPal was used for many small businesses primarily as a format to help collect payments and then transfer those payments into our checking account. So if that's how you're using PayPal, then you got to think, well, what's the easiest method that I could use? And this, this comes down to, again, the industries that we're going to be in. And we want to really think about our particular situation to try to come up with the cleanest, easiest system that we can use. Often remembering when we're looking at this system that there's going to be some sort of trade-off between a lot of detail versus less detail, but more simplicity uh, in order to track our information. So if you're using like a PayPal, for example, as a a system of collecting. I'm looking at a flow chart now. This is a QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're looking at just simply the flow, which is the same for basically any kind of accounting system. And we're primarily looking at the revenue cycle here. So we talked about in prior presentations, if we're trying to construct our books directly from the bank feeds, then uh, the easiest system is just to wait till something clears the bank to record it as revenue. But that only works in certain industries. That would work in like gig work industry uh, if you get paid by YouTube or something like that. If you're in an industry where you're at a cash register, then you can't really do that because oftentimes the internal controls of tracking the cash 
force you to want to record the transactions as you're making them and then deposit into the bank and use the bank recs to match. And in, if you are in an accrual type of system where you're invoicing clients, you have to track the accounts receivable. So we've talked about those systems in the past. What if you're in a system where you're getting paid through an intermediary uh, type of financial institution? If you're doing online work, for example, with a Shopify or something like that, uh, or uh, you have your own website and you're getting paid for something online, then they might not be depositing directly into your checking account. They might want to use these third-party facilitator tools to help to collect the deposits, such as a PayPal is a classic one, or it might be like a Stripe or many other kind of intermediary payment processors that are going to be kind of getting in between the payment that's coming to you from the platform and what's actually going to go into your bank account. Now, so if, for example, you work like you have a Shopify store or something like that, then it might like you might get paid through different of these intermediary platforms. Then the question is, well, how do I want to record the sales on my side? The easiest thing to do is just to wait until it clears the intermediary platforms to my actual checking account. And when it hits my checking account, I record it at that point in time. However, if you do that, you're going to lose some of the detail uh, in your zero system from the actual sales transactions because by the time it hits your bank account, it might be grouping multiple sales transactions that have happened. And if it's a Shopify store or an Amazon kind of thing, then you might have other costs that are kind of grouped into that deposit you put in your account, such as the fees and whatnot related to, to the Shopify store and that kind of stuff. Now you might be okay with that. You might say, well, that's the easiest system. I don't need all that added detail. I have what I need. So I'm gonna wait till it hits my bank account and just record it as revenue. That's the easiest thing to do. When I wanna look at the more detail, I can look at the customers on the Shopify side or on the PayPal side or on the Stripe side that made the actual transactions. Uh, you could have a similar situation where you do gig work for multiple platforms, let's say, and this will be kind of like our example here. and those multiple platforms then might be might be paying you through some kind of third party processor like a Stripe or like a PayPal. And you might say, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to take it out of Stripe or PayPal and put it into my account. And then I will just call it revenue once it hits my account. What you're going to miss on the detail if you do that is the fact that the payments that went through the processors came from different sources if they were different sites. Like if, if you had a teaching platforms that came from different teaching platforms or something like that, then then you're not going to have all that added detail in your account. You're just going to call it teaching revenue. So again, the question is, is that good enough? Is that enough detail? Is that all the detail you need? It might be good enough to just do your taxes if that's all you need, although it doesn't give you that added detail of breaking out the source of the revenue uh, that that it came from. Now, your other option then is to say, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to connect to the third party platforms. I'm gonna to try to pull the information. This is a little bit more difficult oftentimes on like a Stripe type of thing if you're using that, because usually you have to use different integrations to kind of connect uh, those accounts. You can do it, but you have to be very careful if you're doing those integrations. Because if you have something like a Shopify store, then you probably don't want all the customer data in your zero account because the Shopify store is, is just usually often one-time sales of bulk sales. And they already have all that information on the Shopify side. So you don't really want to be careful not to use apps or think about whether you need to use an app that's going to pull all the information into zero, which might be redundant because you might already have that information. If you do that and you add a whole bunch of transactions into zero that you don't need, it could end up slowing down the zero system. So just be careful with that. With PayPal, the other thing with PayPal is that you might start using PayPal because it's quite convenient to pay for expenses as well. In which case you're you're now using PayPal as a kind of a, a, a checking account. So PayPal has kind of morphed from just just like a thing to just transfer, you know, uh, transactions, oftentimes businesses for getting payments to something that is used to, to make payments and therefore it's acting more as a checking account. 
So PayPal in particular has the capacity to connect to the bank feeds. So that's another option with that particular intermediary platform. You could connect to PayPal, right? So if you connect to PayPal, what's gonna happen is you make the sales, they come through PayPal, and then you're gonna be able to uh, have inter, uh, inter bank fee transactions as you transfer from PayPal to the checking account. And then you might have payments that come out of PayPal as well in a similar way as another checking account. So this is kind of similar to another checking account as well if we had two checking accounts or savings account. All right, so let's. So we could just add PayPal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another account, but we're actually gonna upload the information from a CSV file, but, but go through the connection process as if we're gonna connect uh, directly. So we're in the banking area. I can add a bank account and if i search in here it's going to try to connect so i could search for paypal and you can see that it does have a paypal so we'll select the paypal and uh and zero is going to say automatically import your paypal transaction so normally you would want to do that if you want to connect directly to paypal but because this is an example problem i'm going to skip this and upload from a csv file which you might want to do in practice as well if you want to go further back then possibly you can pull in from a direct connection and then connect going forward so i'm going to skip this bit and i'm going to then say the uh, account name paypal us dollars that's what i'm in so i'm going to save that and looks good and so now in our banking information we got the checking the credit card and we've got paypal pay up pal so if i go into paypal now i'm going to upload my transaction so we have the same kind of format here as other bank feeds we've got the reconcile tab nothing's in it nothing's in any of them and we've got the uh, cash coding nothing's in it if you don't have cash coding you can go into your user profile uh, and and add the cash coding if you want to use that bit and you don't really have to i'm mean, stop saying bit and then we've got the account transactions now uh, if you wanted to upload or practice with the bank feeds, uh, you could hit the drop down here and say that I want to import a statement. So when you say statement, you, the first thing that comes to my mind is usually like an actual PDF file, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about importing the transactions into the bank feeds instead of connecting to the bank. Once they're in zero, we will have them in what I call bank feed limbo in a holding position that have not yet been fully processed into the final, final financial statements. So we can upload with an OFX file, a QFX, a QIF, a QBO, a CSV. Now, if you go to the, your normal banking institutions, many banking institutions have like a format of these types of files including oftentimes a qbo type of file which is an easy one to upload i i do not believe at this point in time paypal does however if you wanted to manually upload but they do in most institutions have a csv type of file so you could use that uh, if you wanted to practice now if you download the transactions from paypal in a csv file then then paypal will give you a bunch of transactions that you don't need a bunch of columns you don't need and you'll have to delete the columns so just be aware of that uh, but you can look at the template and see the columns that you do need by opening up their csv template over here and if you wanted to just practice inputting information into a template then you could use you know a template like this so it has a date amount payee description uh reference in the check number so here here's an example of that template with just some transactions in it now again if you downloaded everything from paypal what you could do is just copy those columns and into your template so you could copy the date the amount and then the description is really all you need just like the normal bank transfers the increases and decreases to to the account is what you want uh, if you wanted to make up your own data, just make sure, remember that you're creating this in Excel, but this is only opened in Excel. When I save it, it's actually a CSV file. If you create this in Excel, you can convert it to a CSV file by going to the file dropdown, save as, and then you'll say browse and just note that down here, the file type is a comma delimited as opposed to an Excel worksheet. 
And so that's what you can upload. It's basically an Excel file that's been stripped down to its uh, core elements here, right? So it doesn't have all the fancy Excel stuff that's gonna mess up when you're just trying to import the data file. So let's go ahead and import this. I'm just gonna close this out and we'll say, let's uh, select this. I have this on my desktop. There's a lot of stuff on my desktop. So uh, don't, I'm kind of ashamed of all the stuff on it, but I know where everything is. Uh, it's really organized actually. So this is gonna be, I think it's this one. <laughs> PayPal bank feed, that's the one. There it is. So PayPal bank feed CSV file. Let's open it up. This is just formatting the the headers that were on the the Excel sheet or the CSV file. And there's an example of it. And that's the transaction date. That's correct. This is the amount. That's the transaction amount. That's correct. So we're just lining up the headers, payee, payee column. That's correct. We didn't have anything in it. Description, description column. That's correct. Reference, there was nothing in it, but, but I'll just put reference column here just so I have it. Check number, we'll just say, okay, uh, check number. We didn't have any check numbers. And don't import the first line because they're column headings. So we don't wanna import the line that says date on it and amount and a description. So that's cool. This is the last transaction uh, that we had imported. Uh, so so uh, transaction, oh, this is a preview. So let's go ahead and say next it's preview and so i'm going to say okay and so here's all the stuff we're going to be importing into the system so that looks good 15 transactions okay let's do it let's do it man import that stuff and so now we've got our paypal has the information in it so this this now would be the same position that we would be in as if we just connected to the paypal and used it basically like another checking account. So, so now instead of me waiting until I transfer the stuff out of PayPal into the checking account before recording it as revenue, I can get the more details. So, so, the, so now in my case, I'm like, like a gig worker, right? And these are the platforms that are paying me. So I could say, okay, if this is teachable, I can record that now breaking it out to more detail as as teachable income right this is udemy uh income this is uh skill success income and so on that i can now break out in more detail instead of waiting until i just make a deposit like of this twenty thousand that would hit the bank account my checking account as just one lump sum of twenty thousand so the two methods i could use the easiest method would, f would be for me to say, hey, look, I'm just gonna wait till I transfer whatever is in my PayPal account, the 20,000 here into the checking account. And when I do, I'm just gonna record that amount as revenue. And instead of breaking it out by platform, I'm just gonna call it gig work revenue or whatever, right? But I don't get that detail. By connecting the PayPal, then I have a little bit more detail because now I can break my revenue accounts out by what I actually collected when I collected it uh, and, and then give, give me a little bit more detail. So you could see either method might work depending on your circumstances. So next time we'll just add some of these. As we add them, it'll be basically the same concept as having two checking accounts, right? Well, now we're gonna add this to a, like a checking account and then we'll have those inter account transfers that we should see in a similar fashion as we saw with the with the credit card and checking account when we paid off the credit card, which will have a transaction, which each side of the transaction will have a bank, uh, a bank feed connection that we'll have to deal with. So we'll 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 do those. Those will be the, the transfers that we'll have. So we'll take a look at those in future presentations.